it's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. You feel like you're in prison. You feel like you've done something wrong. It's inhumane what they're doing. Like you, you are so small. You, they just overpower you and you're literally nothing. It's like you do what we say or you're in trouble. We'll lock you up for longer. Yeah, they were even threatening me that if I was to do this again, we will extend your time in here. Hello and welcome to Unheard. I'm Freddie Sayers. Australia. Until recently, that country was most famous for its sunshine and relaxed attitude. Well, since the COVID pandemic hit, we've all got to know another side of Australia. With some of the longest and most stringent lockdowns and travel restrictions in the world, it's become a case study of what happens when a government will do anything to keep COVID numbers low. Their latest policy is to build special camps, COVID internment camps, to which infected and suspected infected people are moved. The biggest of these camps is called Howard Springs. It houses up to 2,000 inmates, surrounded by tall fences and carefully policed against attempts to escape. It's been described as the gold standard of such camps and is being replicated across Australia. Joining us today on the line from Darwin in the Northern Territories is Hayley Hodgson. She has just returned from a 14-day, let's say, stay at Howard Springs, and she's agreed to tell us all about it. Hi, Hayley. Hi, how are you going? So we are really keen to just hear what's happened to you. It sounds like you've had quite an interesting last couple of weeks. Take us right back to the beginning. How did this all start? Okay, so how it all started was um, a friend of mine went to work and got tested for COVID. He had a little bit of a cold. He tested positive. He got put into this quarantine camp um, and then we went about our days as normal and then the investigators starting to knock on our doors and stuff like that. Um, so then what actually happened was I had investigators come I walked out the front of just just to interrupt you. So how did they investigate you? Were, were, were you part of a contact tracing kind of list? Or? So what they, what they did is how they contacted me was I have a scooter and they ran my number plate and they ran the number plates and seen the footage that I was with the person who had tested positive and that's how they knocked on my door and knew where I lived from running my number plates. Okay. So then do they call you up or did they come straight to the house or what happens next? Yeah, so they came straight to my house. I didn't get a call or anything. I literally walked out the front and it was two undercover investigators. And they said, oh, do you know so-and-so? I said, yes. They said, have you been with them? I said, yep. I told them my whereabouts, where I'd been, everything like that. And they said, no worries. And they said, had you had a COVID test done? I said, yes, I had when I had it just because I was so scared of in the moment and I've been to one of these quarantine camps before, only literally a month before this. So I know what it was like. I was just really scared. It was just a horrible position to be in. And I just, I just lied and said, look, yeah, I have when I had, they said, you know, they, they drove off about five minutes later, they called me and they said, we've tried to check the system and your name's nowhere. We can't find you. And I said, look, I've lied to you. I'm completely sorry. I, I'm so apologetic you know, I'm, I'm scared. I don't want to, you know, this is just such a scary thing. Um, and they said, yep, righto, stay there. Someone's going to come and test you. I said, all right. So I stayed there and I just waited for someone to come and test me. No one came to test me. The next people who rocked up at my house were two other police officers. They blocked my so driveway. These are, these are actually uniformed police officers, normal yep. police officers. So then the police officers blocked my driveway. I walked out and I said, what's going on? Are you guys testing me for COVID? What's happening? They said, no, you're getting taken away and you have no choice. You're going to Howard Springs. Um, you either come with us now um, and we'll put you in the back of the Divi van. So, or you can have a choice to get a COVID cab. So, of course, I chose the COVID cab because they said, well, if we're to take you, we're going to um, hand you a $5,000 fine. So, I, of course, I didn't want that to happen. So I just said, look, I don't consent to this. I don't I don't understand why I can't just self-isolate at home like a lot of other people are doing. Um, and they just said, 
we've just been told from higher up where to take you and that's all that there is. So Howard Springs is the biggest COVID camp in Australia, isn't it? It's a huge yes. network of cabins that is built to house potentially infected people. Yeah, so they are literally bringing in now hundreds of people that are of close contact or that have COVID. So it doesn't even matter if you test negative on your first test, your second or your third. They need to, because you're a close contact, you have to stay in there for 14 days, no matter what. So let's get back to this situation at your house. So the, these two policemen, what is the choice they give you exactly? It's come with us in this van or yep. you get a $5,000 fine. Yeah, so it's, you come with us, we take you there and you're given a $5,000 fine or we will call a COVID cab and right. we will not fine you. So it's pretty much you have to consent, otherwise you're getting a $5,000 fine. Okay, so then some hours later, the COVID cab arrives. Yeah, it was probably the policeman stayed at my driveway until this cab came. They said, can you please go pack a bag? So I went and packed a bag and whilst I was packing my bag, I had my housemates at the front speaking to them and they said, is she able to just do a test? And once that test comes back negative, is she able to, you know, leave and come and come back to normal life? Um, and they, these police officers said, yes, we're pretty sure you, that all you have to do is return a negative test and you'll be released. So that gave me you know, that calmed me down knowing, okay, well, if I return a negative test, I can just go back home. So I got in the COVID cab and the police... I think we've got some footage that your mum took, actually, that we can play of you waving goodbye and getting into the back of a van. I've just um, come and she's she's being taken away. But look at the COVID van. How professional. Long live COVID. (laughs) that is a COVID taxi, but is actually a casino bus. So driving there and then the police or police escorted me in and then I never seen them police again. They left. They weren't allowed into the facility. So then new police came and they, they were in charge. Obviously, I was very distressed. I was crying. I was saying this isn't fair. You know, it was just horrible to go through and I... I stood there and I just said, can I please have a test now? Because I need these test results back as I will be negative. And I, I later on, I was negative. The whole time I was there, I was negative. Um, and I said, once these go negative, am I allowed to leave? And she said, no, you're here for the 14 days. So the and first I time stayed. you found out that you were there for 14 days was when you arrived? Yeah. Okay, so you, you, you get taken to a room, is it? A cabin? What's, what's life like inside these camps? You literally get put on the back of a golf buggy with your bags and these people are in hazmat suits and everything. They, they don't want to come near you because they think you're infectious and they literally drop you to your room and they leave you. They don't come and say anything they don't check up they don't do anything you know you get delivered your meals once a day and you are just left and are you allowed to talk to people i mean you, you, we could have have you spoken to people from inside the camp we can but we're only allowed to stay in our designated areas which is nothing maybe two meters um we have a a deck that we're allowed to go out and maybe get a little bit of sunlight, but that is it. If you get caught off your decking without a mask on or anything, um, you get a $5,000 fine. And then that happened to me. So I didn't get a $5,000 fine. I got a written up warning, which is I actually sent you guys some footage on that as well. Yeah, so tell Um, us about what we're about to see here. So this is these are the officials inside the camp who are disciplining you because you were apparently not being contained within your area is that right yeah correct so i went to the bin to put something in the bin that i was not wearing a mask mind you i actually have an exemption i don't need to wear a mask i have yeah, a medical condition um and the person that came to hand me the notice was another police officer so, to do what they so what's what's the guy so this i'm gonna give you a warning yeah it's an official warning 
that you have to stay on the block and obey the rules while you get, yeah? And that's, we have to go to the rules again. I don't care. So am I allowed to go to the laundry? You're allowed to go to the laundry, but you've got to wear a mask, yeah? Yeah, right yeah. And you definitely can't go up the fencing rails. So you're allowed to go to the laundry, yeah? That's always been the case, yeah? Right, so if I was sitting just here, which is right near the fence, why are these guys in a cabin that's right near the fence? It makes no sense, does it? Yeah, but you can't leave your balcony to go to the fence to talk to somebody else. That's what's obvious, yeah? So if I was at that balcony... Have to make sense. So there's, we always, there has to be lines everywhere drawn, yeah? And one of the lines is you cannot leave your balcony and you cannot go to someone else. Where it makes no sense or it doesn't seem right to you, that is the line and that's what the law is, yeah? And that's how it goes, yeah? The law. Well, the show direction. There's a law that says show that. Show direction, yep. There's a show direction, yeah? And how the behaviour must be done, especially in this area because it's much more highly infectious and likely to have infected people, yeah? Highly infectious when all of us people are negative. So, so far, the risk is still very high, yeah? Yeah. Just while you're here, can we just do that? Otherwise, the next time it's a $5,000 fine. We don't want to do that. It's a $5,000 fine, $5, fine if what? If, if you breach again. If if I walk out onto that path. Without your mask on, for no reason other than the laundry. If yeah. I cross that yellow line. Saying that you've broken the rule. That I've broken the rule, I will be issued with a $5,000 fine. That's correct. Right. Okay. I could have, we could even do that now, but we're giving the warning first. Have a chat with you because it's a big fine. Rather just do the right thing, yeah? Like I said, I'm not here to fight with you. Yeah. I don't want to fight with you. Yeah. I just want everybody to do the right thing, and yeah. unfortunately, it's my job to make sure they do. I don't care. The ins and outs. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm just here to make sure the rules are here, yeah? So, what did that experience make you think? Like, what, what was your feeling about being in that situation with those people in control of your every movement? Oh. Uh, it's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. You feel like you're in prison. You feel like you've done something wrong. It's inhumane what they're doing. Like you, you are so small. You, they just overpower you and you're literally nothing. It's like you do what we say or you're in trouble. We'll lock you up for longer. Yeah. They were even threatening me that if I was to do this again, we will extend your time in here. So the, the officers within the camp have the power to keep you there longer if you misbehave. That's what they were saying, yep. And at one stage, is it true that they offered you Valium? Yeah, so because I was so distressed and I said, can you just please let me out for a walk or a run? Like I'm in this little box and I can't move. Can I please, I'm, you know, I'm anxious, I'm feeling not well, just I need to get out. And they literally said, we've got a doctor calling you and we'll get some Valium prescribed to you that you can call us anytime you like and you can have Valium. Just to calm you down. Yeah. So when did this end, Haley? You were in there for the full 14 days? Yeah, correct. Yeah, 14 days. And that was a few days ago that you came out? Yeah, I think I've been out a week and a half now. So during that whole time, how many times were you tested and did you ever test positive? Never tested positive at all and I was tested three times. So at the moment, you haven't had COVID? Never had COVID and I was of close contact to someone, never got it and I was treated literally like a criminal. What's happened to you since you came out? I no longer have a job as I was casual at where I was working so I am now unemployed. So you were working um, at it, in a store or what? How did that happen? Yeah, so I was just working in a retail store. Um, obviously casual, you don't get paid any sick leave or for being away from your job. So um, I wasn't getting paid or anything whilst I was being in there. They compensated me, I think, $1,500 for the two weeks. Um, and, and that was all. So you've lost your job? Yeah. Now currently unemployed because of this situation. There's been a lot of press in Australian media about how these camps are really luxurious and it's like having a holiday. Did it feel like a holiday for you? No, no way. You are literally trapped in a box on your decking with fences all around you, um, cameras everywhere. Like it is, it's just astounding. Like you're literally treated like a prisoner in there. So let's zoom out a little bit, Haley. You've been living through this for the past couple of years. What is happening, do you think, to, to Australia and to your country? 
Well, it's it's so it's so hard. It's like people aren't, you know, we just abide by the rules and we're just going with the flow, but this flow doesn't seem to be getting any better. Like, you know, we have hardly any numbers and they're doing this to us still. It's just it's just crazy. I originally lived in Victoria, Melbourne, where it was really, really bad and we we had lockdowns. We've been in lockdowns for months and months. And the reason why I moved to Darwin was to get away from that because Darwin wasn't as bad and the lockdowns weren't happening. So once I moved up here, it was all it was all fine. And then that one case happened and it it's just crazy. Like they locked the whole state down um, and just sending heaps and heaps of people there because this obviously Darwin is the only place that has this quarantine camp in Australia. Because in the international media, it's been reported that Australia is kind of relaxing a bit, or at least the rules about international travel are relaxing. They no longer plan to have zero COVID. They're going to understand that they need to manage it. Does it feel like it's getting better over there? I think every state is different. Um, at the moment, Darwin is really, really harsh with it, with what's going on and stuff. I think other states are are relaxing as more people are getting vaccinated. Um, but the unvaccinated people who choose not to be are just looked at like prisoners and that they're doing the wrong thing. So what are you going to do next, Hayley? What, what comes next for you? What comes next? Well, find a job. That's definitely. Um, and really want to get awareness out to what is going on. Like these camps are getting built all over the world. I know there's another one getting built in Victoria at the moment. And as I said, it doesn't matter if you're not vaccinated. One, you know, you have one dosage of the vaccination or two. It doesn't matter your vaccination status. You can get sent to these camps if you are of close contact, like I was, um, or if you lie to authorities. As, as I found out because I said that I had a test when I hadn't and then I found out later that um, I was in there for punishment. Who told you that? CDC, Centre Disease Control. So they, I found so they say that your sentence, your two-week incarceration was actually punishment for having said you got a test and, and when you didn't. Yeah, yeah. Where when other people were of close contact and they were allowed to self-isolate at home where there was probably about 10 of them and I was the only one that got sent there. And that's what I was saying. Like, it doesn't make sense. Why am I the only one here? I, I want answers to this. And that was the only time that I got an answer is when I rang CDC and they said, yeah, there's a high chance that you're in there for punishment because you lied to authorities. At any stage of this process, did anyone tell you your rights? Have you had any contact with a lawyer? Has there been any kind of legal process? Nothing. I've had nothing. I, um, yeah, literally, it's just, it's so hard. No, no one really wants, nobody knows. That's the thing. So it's like you're on your own in these situations and, you know, you just left. That, that's all. Like there's no help when you're in this camp and there's no help when you're out of this camp. Like it's just you do your time and we'll leave you alone. That's all there is. So we've heard that people have been trying to escape this Howard Springs camp in the past few days. Do you, what do you know about that? Yeah, I did hear that I think three people have escaped. I don't know if they've found them yet, um, but yeah, they have escaped. And, and do you understand why they would do that? I mean, give us a sort of summary of what your mental state has been like during this period and, and what the whole experience has done to you. Oh, trust me, when I was in there, I was thinking, how do I, how do I escape? But, you know, what are going to be the consequences if I do and if I get caught? You know, it just it's an ongoing thing. Um, oh, your mental health, it's just, as I said, like you're in a box, your mind's just going a million miles an hour, you feel horrible, you feel, yeah, it's just horrible what they're putting people through because you feel like you've done something wrong when you haven't. You All you were doing is going about your normal life and you were close contacts with someone who was ill. That's all it is. Hayley, thank you so much for telling us your story. No worries. Thank you for having me. That was Hayley Hodgson. Thanks to her for telling her story. She joined us from Darwin in the Northern Territories in Australia, telling us about her last two or three weeks, which have been, to say the least, quite unusual. And let's just remember that this is a person who has not had COVID, even now. And here she is. She's lost her job 
and she's just spent 14 days in voluntary incarceration, raises, I think, some quite important questions about what the end goal of all this is. Thank you to her and thanks to you for joining. This was Unheard.